where do you see Canada's relationship with China today? Well, it's a troubled relationship today for a lot of reasons. Uh, what happened, uh, another small story if we have time for it, uh, Jean Chrétien came up to me uh, in a Liberal caucus shortly after uh, he was elected. Uh, we had the Tiananmen problem incident, as the Chinese call it, in uh, 89. Uh, and uh, Brian Mulroney was prime minister, and along with the U.S. and other countries, uh, they put China on the uh, uh, silent treatment. Uh, and uh, now Kretchen comes along in 93, and the first thing he does almost uh, is say is tell his bureaucracy and, and tell me, I'm president of the Canada-China Business Council, a, a business organization uh, that tries to promote trade with China. He says to me, I want to resume the commercial aspect of this. Uh, and he created a dichotomy, a, di a difference between doing business and doing politics. And so we succeeded enormously in doing business while talking about the human rights issues and conflict value issues on the side. But then those two got brought back together and, and the dialogue uh, uh, under Harper, he brought it back together saying he's not going to be influenced by the almighty dollar. And then it, it took him four years to be influenced by the almighty dollar and change his policy. Uh, Justin Trudeau has uh, pursued another value policy towards uh, China, uh, gender and labor rights and so on. Uh, and then, of course, the three M's, uh, Meng Wanzhou and the two Michaels, uh, uh, where the Chinese basically held hostage two Canadians, arguing that we had held hostage one of their people. Uh, so we now have a very uh, uh, difficult situation where about 80% of Canadians uh, have a negative attitude towards China. That makes it hard for the political system to try to bring it forward. And yet, uh, without anybody really noticing, our trade with China keeps growing. And we, we just exceeded 100 billion in two-way trade. Canada sells 30 billion to China. It's not insignificant, particularly to Western Canada. Uh, agriculture, mineral resources, lumber. So I think we just manage uh, day by day without trying to get too uh, earnest about uh, finding a solution. The solution will eventually emerge. Just keep talking, do our best to keep things going, and uh, eventually... Uh, the past will disappear and a new a new opportunity will appear in the present. Well, one thing that may complicate that, though, is this recent story. I'm sure you're aware of these allegations of Chinese interference in Canadian elections to the uh, apparent benefit of uh, Beijing friendly candidates. How seriously should the government take this issue? Should there be a public inquiry? No, I agree with a, a fellow called uh, Andrew Coyne in the uh, Globe and Mail that there's no cause for a public inquiry. There's no evidence that uh, any damage was done. The government has clearly been tracking everything uh, going on in this particular case. And a public inquiry uh, basically is just a, a, a call by the opposition to... Uh, keep uh, the anti-China rhetoric going uh, and uh, uh, finding uh, that uh, as long as 80% of Canadians don't like China, uh, attacking China has political value for the opposition. It has no value for Canada's real interests uh, in dealing with China. The Chinese are playing games here and there. We watch them, our, our security service is pretty good at uh, tracking them. The Americans, uh, you know, the Five I group, uh, uh, a group of five countries, including the United States, that collaborates in tracking uh, intelligence on China, 
uh, is pretty sharp about what's going on. The American technologies are unbelievable. Uh, I mean, they can read every phone call between the US and China, between Canada and China, every email. Uh, I mean, the public doesn't know just where the technology goes, but it's amazing. So as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing but a political charade. And it, it points uh, to more difficulties uh, in, uh, in resolving China. And what people have to understand is China has been the, the motor of the global economy for quite a few years. If, if China's economy is, is slowed by sanctions, we pay a huge price too. The Americans pay a huge price too. Uh, in in the uh, way that the global economy carries the uh, costs of domestic uh, government. Is it possible, though, that uh, Beijing could be meddling in Canadian elections? I mean, if if that is, in fact, true, uh, that's that's more than just uh, anti-Chinese rhetoric. It's possible that uh, they could try to influence uh, some Chinese communities. Uh, to vote in a particular way. They probably have done that. Uh, they have a group called the United Front, which is essentially uh, trying to create a better impression of China in international communities. Uh, and, you know, but the Chinese, I, I don't think there's any evidence that they had any impact, whatever. Uh, any significant impact, whatever. It, it's an international game and we, we have to have a big perspective to understand what's going on.